Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to go over a five point checklist that you can use when you are trying to decide on the name of your uh, brand or your business before you go reserving domains and making you know, purchases around trademarks and other things like that. There are some really great examples out there for not only products, services, uh, places to eat, where you'll see some really great branding and you'll see some really bad disasters. And uh, it's, it's important to think through at least a handful of things and you can decide to go ahead sort of despite some of the perils, but at least be aware. So I know many of you, I'm Marjorie Stiegler, I'm a physician, I'm also a digital marketing strategist and I'm here just to give you these tips today for fun because I know I've seen many, many people's New Year's resolution is to finally get some traction or really get going with some of their business ideas that have been kind of hanging around in the back burner that they just haven't gotten around to doing. So let's get into it. The first thing is how will it read, right? How will it look when it's written down? So it's great to have an idea that you can talk about with other people, but it's also very important to think about what it's going to look like written down. And more importantly, what is it going to look like written down without any capitalization or separation of words? So because that's, of course, how our social media handles are for the most part, and it's also how the website is. It's how the URL is. And so without inserting a bunch of odd characters like underscores and things like that, and of course, not all the social media platforms allow for that anyway, you're more than likely going to just have your whole name written out in one long string. And so you want to be sure that it's going to read in a way that makes the words decipherable and memorable. That's one of the most important things to really kind of keep a handle on. I know that just for my email address once I was on a customer service conversation with somebody and they were asking me for my email address and this was um, an abbreviation and my maiden name but I started rattling off you know spelling my email address and the guy said to me is that just a string of random letters and I said no that's my name but uh, fortunately I'm not trying to make a brand out of that email address but uh, it, it really kind of opened my eyes to the fact that what looks to me very obviously like my name or back then uh, was Pedraza so the email address was DRM Pedraza, but if we take out the capital D and the capital M and then the Pedraza, it just looked like a whole bunch of nothing to this to this person anyway. So how will it read? That's number one. Hi, Nancy. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining. Um, the second one is how will it sound? Now, I don't know how many of you guys remember that a couple years ago, I think it was Burger King, uh, tried to launch these sort of diet french fries, right? They were a lower calorie version of french fries and they decided to call them satisfies, fries, right? And the idea was that they were, it was going to be very satisfying, right? They were going to be satisfying fries, even though they were diet fries. But the problem is that the way that most people say it is a little bit soft on the, on the consonants. And so what it sounds like is saddest fries. These are the saddest little fries. Why would you ever want to eat these sad fries? And that did not last long, as you might guess, because the saddest fries were really not very appealing by their name. That just didn't work out. So when you saw it written down, it looked okay, you know, and when you see it next to some fries, you can kind of get excited. And maybe if you tried them, I never did. But if you listen to the way that most people said it, it was just doomed from the beginning. The third is, is it searchable? So we've already said, you know, you're going to have to have it in the URL and probably in your social media handles, but you want to have something that's reasonably searchable. So for example, uh, there is a, a woman, an author, whose name is escaping me at the moment, but her sort of tagline is that she's the productivity pro. And this is fantastic for her because that's what she does. She consults, she writes, she publishes all about productivity tips. She has books and stuff like that. And she has basically given herself a slogan. So it's her name, her name, which I can't remember, and the productivity pro, which I can remember. And that makes it really easy because if I want to find her, I know I can just Google productivity pro. The other thing that is really important about it is that even if I'm not looking for her, what is a person going to type into Google when they're interested in finding some experts in productivity or some tips around productivity? They're going to start probably with the word productivity and she's going to pop right up. If they don't start with productivity or they may take it a little further productivity, perhaps professional productivity, something she is going to be ranking at the top and does for a lot of these phrases because that is sort of her tagline and because the tagline matches what people search. So your business name also should ideally match what people search or you should have a phrase some kind of catching all that uh, is that is similar to what you expect your ideal audience is going to be searching for. I want to tie that in to the importance of it being memorable. As I just sort of pointed out, I have no idea what her actual name is. I've, I've listened to her audiobook. She's got good tips. I've seen her in magazines giving interviews and stuff like that. 
Uh, and I know that she searches really well, but I cannot remember her name, but I can remember her brand name. And so that's really critical. Many of us have long drawn out names and you, you know, you don't need your name to be your brand, although it could be. If it is, just make sure that you are helping people find a way uh, to remember it so then they can search for it. Um, they need to also, of course, be able to pronounce it. You've probably heard uh, or seen anyway over the past year, year and a half, so many brands are coming out having dropped a bunch of vowels. And uh, I guess they think that that's edgy and it does kind of make it memorable because it's not a complete word. And so it draws our eye and what are they saying here? Then we sound it out and it's phonetic and that's super. But if they can take it way too far. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the wedding website Beholden, but it is spelled B-H-L-D-N. Beholden, right? To me, that is a big, big, big leap. If I'm looking for a wedding website, I'm definitely going to end up on the not, right? I'm not going to end up on Beholden with no vowels because even if I can remember it, which is a little bit of a stretch, even if I can remember it phonetically, I mean, it's not spelled at all uh, because there's so many vowels dropped that it's very unlikely, I think, that people are finding ease in mem remembering it, searching it, typing it into the search bar. The slightest sort of confusion on those letters can go a long way towards uh, towards getting people just basically unable to find the business. And then the final thing is there ought to be some kind of indication, even just a suggestion of the industry. Now, it's great to have a little bit of curiosity peaking right? you don't have to have everything all spelled out. Um, and so in that regard, you know, it can be interesting to have a name that doesn't explicitly say everything about it, right? That's interesting, that's catchy and cute, and people are gonna be curious to check it out. But there should be at least some remote hint of what the business is on the other side. So I was driving the other day and I took a screen or a picture because we got stuck behind, and my husband was driving, we got stuck behind this one car and I was reading all of its bumper stickers and there were a lot, but it had one. There's a local business here where I live, and but I didn't know that yet. And this example, I think, ties all of these together. The bumper sticker said, don't get, stuck, don't get stuck with a mutt, try a real dog. Well, if you're an animal person, if this were about, like if that were a pet store, that would be really offensive, right? I mean, that's, you know, adoption is sort of where it's at. But anyway, then on the side, there's a little picture that says the dog house, and there's a picture of a dog house. And the, and the word house is stylized with a little tail. That's it, that's what's on the bumper sticker. Now, what is the business? Could it be a pet store? Maybe, you know, is it a, a hoity-toity breeder? Perhaps, I don't know. Is it uh, something to do with pet supplies? Like, can I go buy a pet house there? That's what I see. I see a dog house, the place is called the dog house. Um, buy a real dog, what could it be? We said, well, maybe it's hot dogs, you know, right? It could be a restaurant, hot dogs. And, and then that wouldn't be offensive, right? It would be, it would, it would be like, yeah, this is the best hot dog. This is the real dog. Come try these dogs. But there's no picture of any food, and there's really no overt suggestion that these are about hot dogs. So I had to do what everybody else has to do, which is I got on Google. And I got on Google, and I searched all the words that were on the bumper sticker, right? The dog house. Guess what does not come up at the top? This hot dog place. I searched, don't get stuck with a mutt. Again, nothing. I searched try a real dog. I actually went and spelled the entire thing out. And what I got over and over and over again were all kinds of other businesses, businesses that were you know, pet supplies, that were breeders, that were groomers, that were just Wikipedia telling me about breeds, telling me about mutts, telling me about, you know, no, there's nothing on this bumper sticker. And you know, bless these people because I know they're probably have great hot dogs and I don't, I'm not trying to be disparaging, it's just an example. But unless you already have heard of their business and you know what they are, right? If you don't know them, then seeing this bumper sticker might get you interested as it did get me interested, but it's like a dead end. There was no way to find their business. I mean, there was a way, it took me a while. <laughs> there was a way, but it took a while. So, I mean, if they, they wanted to do a little makeover, they might want to have at least a picture of a hot dog in there. It could be stylized. I don't know. It could be hanging out in the doghouse, but something that gives some kind of semblance of what it is. I think the way that I found them actually is I took that leap of faith to say, is this a hot dog place? And then I added the word hot dog to all of the other stuff they have on their bumper sticker. And then I found the business. So anyway, that uh, goes to show several things. Number one, there needs to be that industry suggestion, at least a little bit of it. It needs to be memorable. It needs to be searchable. And it needs to you think about how it sounds. So not only could satis fries be sort of sad, but when you first read this at first glance, as you might on a bumper sticker, um, 
I mean, it, the reason it caught my eye is because I thought that it was saying something really negative about, you know, the pet adoption industry. <laughs> that was the very first thing that popped in my mind. So that may not be the best uh, either. So how will it read? So that kind of wraps up a little bit of all these things. Here's the checklist again, just as a reminder. Number one, what is it going to look like when it when you read it? When it's all spelled out and there's no breaks, there's no capitalization, there's no stylization, how will it read? Number two, how will it sound when you say it? Number three, is it searchable? Is it easy to find and searchable? And that goes hand in hand with, is it memorable? Because in order for someone to search for it, they're going to want to probably, they're more likely going to need to remember it. They might be staring right at it, but if so, you know, you should have your web address right there. So make sure that it's um, something that is, you know, can be spelled, can be heard, can be recreated based on hearing it, you know, and saying it, that you can search for it, that you can remember what it is, and that there's at least some remote semblance of the industry that is, you know, the topic uh, or, or the, you know, nature of the brand. You don't need to have the exact product uh, spelled out, but, but something that lets you know, are we talking about a consulting firm? Are we talking about a pet store? Are we talking about a restaurant, right? Something that gives a remote sense of what's what. So keep these things in mind as you're developing your plans for your brand in 2019. Make sure that you do all this before you bother to reserve all of the social media handles, certainly before you go registering any trademarks or buying any domain names. Um, domains are easier to undo because you can point, you know, you can redirect them to a new domain if you want to. But just doing this in a way that's deliberate instead of sort of off the cuff, I like this, it sounds cool. Give a little bit of thought to the name of your company or the name of your brand or the name of um, even just sort of your subsite. If you're working with a franchise, or you're working with an MLM, something that will help people to know what you're about and to be able to find you, to be able to remember you, to be able to recommend you. So those are my tips. If you have more, I'd love to hear them. Please uh, leave them in the comments. And if you're interested in more free videos like this one, hop on over to my Facebook page, uh, which is my name. It's DRM Stiegler this time. And since you guys are looking at my name, you can probably just see it and find it. DRM Stiegler, if you want more free videos on social media and on branding and business and so forth. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you for watching. Look forward to talking to you.